Hi, this is Kevin for Sonova.com. In this video, we are looking at installing a VST plugin in Audacity. I'm going to be installing Hysteresis. I'm using the latest version of Audacity. And this particular VST comes with a, an installer. So we're going to be using that. And what I'm going to do is just to go through the procedure. And you can see that it's asking me to install in a place called Program Files x86 Steinberg VST plugins. This is where it's going to install the 32-bit version of the VST plugin. And this is this is a 32-bit VST2 plugin. There are other types of VST plugins out there, some of which don't work well with Audacity, but this one is fine. We're going to hit Next, and it asks me to install another file, which is the 64-bit version. And this is going to go in Program Files, Steinberg, VST, VST plugins. So there are going to be two versions of this particular plugin going in two different directories. Now that's important because Audacity really likes the 32-bit versions. I'm working on a Windows platform. In other platforms, this may not be the case. But we really want to make a note of this address here for the 32-bit plugin. And we then press Next, Next. And before I carry on, some older pieces of software won't go into Steinberg VST plugins. They will actually go into VST plugins, but it won't be in the Steinberg folder. It'll be just underneath the Program Files folder. But that's for some of the really older ones. I only need the 32-bit version one for Audacity, but I'm going to choose full installation because I might use the 64-bit one for other software that is able to handle the 64-bit version. And it does that usual nonsense that programs do when they install. But the important thing is that it's put a bunch of files on the computer, but I know where the ones that I need for Audacity are. Generally, there are three places you can find the plugins once they've installed. You might need to to restart Audacity, but I've already got Audacity open here. And what I would expect to find is the plugin will appear under one of two menus, Effect or Analyze. And you can see that there are already some plugins there. Those are the built-in ones. And under the Effect menu, you can see a whole lot more. Now, there are two places here. So there's a bunch of plugins above this line, and then there's a bunch of plugins below the line. You can look in all those places, and generally it'll be most plugins will appear here or down here. But you should also check the Analyze one if things are not working as expected. Now, the one that I installed was called Hysteresis or something like that. And I can't see it anywhere, so I'm going to go to Add Remove Plugins under the Effect menu. And what this does, it gives us this plugin manager for effects, generators, and analyzers. Let's open this guy up and sort by path. You can see that there are some built-in plugins. And down here, Audacity has got its own plugin folder. So on this computer, which is a 64-bit version of Windows. We've got program files, x86, Audacity, plugins. That's where all the built-in plugins are to be found. You can also see that there is a new plugin here, which is the hysteresis.dll. And this is generally the case with VST plugins. The, the thing that you really need is the .dll file, like this one here. And if you're installing a standalone, you just really need to put the 32-bit version of the .dll inside of whatever folder 
Audacity keeps its plugins in. So you can come here and see where it's actually storing the plugins, I guess. And you'll also notice that down here, there is this Steinberg VST plugins. This is the one that I just installed. But here's the thing. I didn't tell Audacity to look at this Steinberg VST plugins folder. It did it itself. It just knew to look there for a VST plugin. So what I'd actually done was to copy this DLL because I installed it before. I'd actually copied it to the Audacity plugins folder. But turns out I didn't need to because Audacity actually knew that there was this new plugin inside the VST plugins. And if you're using older versions of Audacity, they might not even look to see if there are other plugins installed elsewhere. The other thing I want to point out is that if you're using a 32-bit version of Windows, you might have slightly, slightly different setup. So the principle is the same, but you might have slightly different folder names. Another thing is that with very old plugins, they may not install in the Steinberg or the VST plugins directory. They may place their DLLs in some weird place like these programs often do. But that is the case even with Autotune. This is uh, an old version of Autotune and I had to find out where it had installed it and I had to drag it into the Audacity plugins folder for it to actually register. But once you've got it showing up here, what you then do is, let me go to the one that's new. So this is the one that I dragged into the Audacity folder. I didn't need to because it's already down here, but I did that anyway to show you how it works. And you can see that we've got hysteresis down here. It's in the state of new, and I've just chosen the new ones to show. And what I need to do is just to come here and click on enable, and then it will be among the enabled ones. And I think I should now have two of these. Yeah, so we've got one here, which is the one that I just enabled. And we've got another one, which is actually disabled, which is the one that I installed earlier. And that's basically what you do to, to get the, the plugin where you need it. Now I'm gonna hit OK. And we should find the one that I just enabled under the effects menu and you can see it down here but basically we can now access the plugin for use now you might find sometimes when you you go to the plugin manager you might find that things don't quite work reason for that is that audacity is not the best vst host in the world it doesn't always work so what you need to do is to, if you've dragged the, fold, the file into the Audacity plugins directory, make sure it is the 32-bit version of the .dll file. But if you find that you try to enable it, to enable a plugin, and it enables, but then you come here and you can't find it here or here, it means probably that it is a 64-bit version that just is not going to work. Or it could mean that that particular plugin just doesn't work with Audacity. So you might want to try that with other software. But that's basically an over, overview of uh, the process. I hope that's been of some use. And hopefully see you ne next time for another, for another video tutorial. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye.